Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. And today I'm going to be talking about a few unusual tools and bits and pieces that I use to help me work on my bikes. Uh, you won't have seen some of them unless you're in a very specific trade. Some of them you can actually make yourself if you're willing to sacrifice another tool. And uh, one that looks like some sort of weird medieval torture device. I promise I won't be using this on any of you that watch this and like the video. Honest. Starting with something you might have a larger version of is a G-clamp. This looks like an apprentice piece to me to be honest. This piece rotates so you can use it for clamping something where you need to put force on but you don't want to damage it. Something this is useful for is resetting brake pistons. You can put this on a pad gently wind it in and because the face rotates you can put the fixed piece against the outside of the caliper and gently push the pistons back in. I'd use an old brake pad for this to be honest between the uh, G-clamp and the brake pads. Next up for candles as the old sketch would say but this is only one candle useful for lubricating zips. You can buy specialist zip lube or just get yourself a candle. A quick rub up the inside of both halves of the zip with it open, then shut the zip up, lubricate the outside and if you can reach it the inside as well with the candle and a few quick tugs as it were up and down and you've got yourself a nicely freed up zip. One thing to mention, don't ever do this over a floor that you walk on a lot, but especially something like a laminate floor because if you do you'll make it like ice. But do it over an old bit of cloth and uh, jobs a good one. Had a nice takeaway? Save the tubs. Give them a quick wash out. You can use them for long term storage of items in the garage. Short term storage? I use aerosol caps. You've got chain lube and degreaser and GT85 and other bits and pieces. Keep hold of a couple of the caps and you can use it for chucking your odd bolts in while you're working on your bike. A lead dive weight? I used to scuba dive. But I've got a collection of these and a plank. Um, I work with a few of these. What I use these for is taking out my back wheel and repositioning it correctly. On the Tracer 9 you see here, the centre stand has got a nice crossbar and the rear wheel comes up a long way. So I put the plank on the crossbar, put the other end on top of the scuba weight to get the plank under the rear wheel. You may, if the bike doesn't come up this far on a centre stand or a paddock stand, use the weight in front of the rear wheel to give you a nice slopey plank. So why would you do that? Well, when you have to take your wheel out, and uh, this is when I got a puncture recently, I'm now on my third rear tyre in 3,000 miles on my tracer because of punctures, you can quite simply roll it out once you've pulled the axle out. Yeah, that's easy enough. You could just pull the axle out, drop the tyre onto the floor, but putting it back in, do you want to be trying to wrestle a wheel up on your own? Roll it up the plank and it'll be perfectly positioned for the axle to go back in. If you're replacing a tyre because it's worn out rather than with a puncture, you might need to just lower it slightly to take into account the extra tread depth you've now got. This useful bit of kit is known as a parallel punch or a pin punch. It's designed to knock nails into planks of wood such as flooring and things like that where you don't want to leave tool marks on the wood. So you put this over the head of the nail, bang away merrily with your hammer and you won't mark the surrounding wood. Also serves another purpose. It's really useful if you're of a pin type caliper. Pull out the R clip, position the parallel punch on the smaller of the two holes on the caliper and a quick tap with Molnir will knock the pin out lovely jubbly. Here's a bit of an oddity, it's a funny elasticated strap thing, I call it a matabubu. What's a matabubu? Nothing yogi. What they're actually designed for is keeping sheeting against scaffolding. My right hand is a bit of sheeting, my left hand is a bit of scaffolding and as you can see when you hook it on itself the matabubu keeps the sheeting against the scaffolding. You can use these for emergency bits and pieces on the bike while scuba diving. I've used one of these as an emergency fin strap where my dive buddies broke. I gave him my fin strap because I was a more experienced diver and made myself up an emergency fin strap out of one of these. If you get some luggage and you have a strap go or you lose it or something happens, 
a quick poke of the pointy bit through an appropriate hole and then run the hooked section up through something on your bike that's quite sturdy hook it on and there you go one emergency get your home strap for your luggage if you can't think of 101 other uses for these on a bike i hasten to add then at least think of a hundred of them. Cheap tools can come in useful. Here's a couple of Phillips screwdrivers I've turned into useful carb rubber locators. So if the can is a carb and the rubber band a carb rubber and it's going on but you can't stretch it all the way and you're cursing and swearing, get one of these things that you've made yourself, shove it down the end of the carb rubber and uh, very carefully with the angled piece ease the carb rubber round. Bish bash bosh, ease it back out again, and there you have it, one carb rubber, perfectly located on your carb. Job's a good one. If you ever doubt the need for a non-conductive, fairly sturdy, but not likely to scratch anything delicate tool, then you probably haven't had any really annoying jobs to do on your bike. This is an Aldite mixer for two-part glue. There are other glues available, also, you can use a lolly stick. I was actually going to use a lolly stick in this demonstration, but I couldn't find any in my garage. I've probably chucked them all away and used this instead. It's got a thick end and a thin end. The thin end's got lots of aldite on it that will be scraped off at some point if I ever needed to use it. But a useful bit of kit to have knocking about in the garage because you never know when you're going to need it. If you've ever had a clutch cable go or want to replace a cable, you know it can be a bit of a faff trying to feed the cable through. There is a quick solution using cable ties. So here we go, simulating a clutch replacement on my Himalayan. We have the old clutch cable disconnected from the handlebars. Obviously this is simulated, the real one is still in place. And we're going to use cable ties to attach the new cable to the old one. It's best to do this from the top to the bottom because the top end of the clutch cable does tend to have an angled piece on it, which I find easier to pull downwards rather than try and piece pull an angled piece upwards because what I'll be doing here is be pulling a straight piece downwards and it should follow the path of the clutch cable a lot easier. Don't use one cable tie when you can use two. What I'm doing here is putting one either end of the joining point so I've got one bridle cable which is the inside part of it against the outer on both the old and the new cables. Again, this is simulated. These are actually cables from a different bike. You may need to cut the angled piece off if it's difficult to feed it through. Don't be afraid of doing that. You're replacing a clutch cable, so it's obviously no good anyway. What you then do is grab the bottom end of the old clutch cable, the top end of the new one, and start wiggling it through. You may need a few goes to get this. You may have one of the cable ties come off, as I have and then just start feeding the top end through then you'll go around to the other side of the bike which is the usually the right hand side where the clutch is on the left hand side a few more jiggles one hand either end of the cable or get an assistant if you need to and your new clutch cable comes through dead easy all that's left to do then cut the cable ties off and secure and adjust the new clutch cable in place of the old one this is a really old trick known by a lot of riders, so you may already have seen this, but it's a, a nice little thing to be able to do and certainly saves on your replacement times through trying to take the front of the bike apart to feed the clutch cable through. So you have an O-ring, or in this case a looped rubber band, and you have a candle, something the O-ring is going to go on. Use your imagination for this one. The O-ring's going to be tight, you can't quite fit it on, it's in a fiddly place. So now we get medieval on yo ass, as I believe the uh, kids have it today. Not that I'm down with the kids. Get the medieval torture implement, which is a set of Hellerman pliers. Go by various other names if you're an engineer, especially if you uh, started your apprenticeship in the 80s, you'll know what I mean. So the O-ring goes over the pointy bit of the Hellerman pliers. You'll notice they're chamfered, so the point is actually on the inside and not on the outside where it catch anything. You put the O-ring over the object you want it to go onto or whatever it is you're trying to fit onto something else and very gently ease out the object you're putting it onto and there you go, a candle with a rubber band around it. Who could possibly want more? Then we come on to whiteboard markers. Why do you need a whiteboard marker? For my whiteboard. 
Here's part of mine with my old 900 Hornet on the left and my new Tracer on the right. I've got everything right here from the MOT date, the tax date, tyre pressures, when they were replaced, although on the Hornet this is quite out of date now. Things like brake pad part numbers and when they were replaced as well. Torque settings, chain adjustment, type of chain. All this stuff's useful to write down if you have multiple bikes and even if you have one bike, Writing all the figures down makes things a lot easier. You're not going to be scrabbling around trying to find your way through a Haynes manual in the dark for a torque setting. It'll be in big, bold writing, hopefully neater than mine, on your whiteboard, in your garage. And to round off, I'm going to finally go full engineering genius level. And you've been out for a ride with Maverick and... He's uh, pulled up on his supercharged, turbocharged, whatever, Kawasaki. And he's found out he's got a bit of a loose screw in his aviators. You don't, however, have a precision screwdriver handy to fix it. What you do have, though, is a drinks can, a pair of scissors and a bit of ingenuity. Start out by chopping out a lump of the drinks can carefully. This is going to leave bits of swarf everywhere, so just be careful where you do this and not to cut yourself on all the sharp edges you're going to get. A bit of shaping trimming up done. A quick double fold over to give it some strength and then fold it in half around where you've left a nice little handy lug over to uh, make yourself an emergency precision screwdriver. And there you go. You can see there, there's the little bit of the blade that I've left open from cutting it. Put it into place on the tiny screw on the arm of the glasses. A bit of a gentle nip up and it'll get you home till you get your precision screwdrivers. I feel the need, the need to improvise. So there you have it. A selection of tools which I use, some of which I've found uses for that were a bit unusual, some of which I've modified, some of which I've uh, found and thought, hmm, that might come in useful one day and kept hold of it. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there you can look at using in a, a stranger way than is originally intended for. A few things about tools. First of all, buy the best you can afford because if you work on your bikes a lot, it's important they last and are of good quality. Secondly, always clean them after use. A clean tool is a safe tool, as a friend of mine said. And thirdly, keep them organised. If you know where your tools are, there's a lot less swearing and throwing things around the garage trying to find them. Anyway, until the next video, which hopefully will be something more about riding or planning riding rather than doing stuff in the garage, take care, safe riding.